Greetings from the land of OP. I am Rob the OP Gamer, and I am bringing you a, another build surprise, episode number six, with my friends and server admin Xavier McMage, who's going to spring a build on me that I have not had time to prepare for before. Hopefully, he will be throwing everything in my face straight from my computer to your faces. What's up, Xavier? Not much, Rob. I'd, first off, I'd like to say I'd like to order a bacon cheeseburger, a triple meat treat, and a swiftness potion to wash it all down. Okay, here you go. There's your order, sir. <laughs> that wasn't hard. This has been Build Surprise, brought to you by... No, <laughs> Now I'd like to see you uh, actually build that. Build something that can make those for me. Oh, like an automated sort of like requesting station? Precisely. Ah, oh, sour. I was going to ask if you had if you had comedy or uh, science for me today, and I guess it's going to be comedy. So uh, let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's find a uh, let's find a spot around here, I guess. Hmm. Well. This whole immediate area is starting to get really, really clogged up with, uh, with build surprises. Maybe we could do something over here. Flatten out this area a little bit. Hmm. This whole village is so sour. We were talking about this off camera a minute ago, but this, they've, they've had, they've been fucked ten ways from Sunday over here. Fucking meteor hit them, I guess. <laughs> Did you see the meteor? BT dubs? I see the meteor. Smash two of their houses. I recorded this for the end of an episode, uh, funny little thing, recently, and now to come over here and see the fact that it's been totally, ob totally obliterated is just hilarious. I think this was two meteors. Was it? The shape doesn't look right. Like in the same spot? That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Still, just as sour. I guess that would be fucked 11 ways from Sunday, then. <laughs> okay, let's um, let's do this. I'm gonna go over here somewhere, and we'll clear off a little area for setting up a little little station for stuff. Eh, we'll find a place and we'll be, and we'll be back. Welcome to McRobs. May I take your order, or may I make some shit happen for you? What do you think? Giant neon sign. Looking great. Clearly says it's yours. Clearly. And obviously I had to build out of diamond, because, yeah, OP. So, <laughs> basically we just spent half an hour making a diamond building. That's all we did. <laughs> hey, you gonna clean up your mess over here? What's this? You see nothing. I see some dirt. All right. So I think yeah, I'm going to do this a couple... I've pretty much got a few ideas on how I'm going to do this. Uh, let's start down here. I think what we're going to do is... We're going to have, like, an order section, right? Because that's how, like, an actual fast food place works. They have, like, a section where they take orders first that you don't actually see. Yeah. So how big is this? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll do this. And I'm going to grab a builder's wand. And we're going to... Bring this this away. Do 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 do. So this out here will be the order area, and I'm gonna leave a little section back here for going back into the back. There we go. And we need a counter. Are you gonna be my decorator, or should I decorate? Yeah, uh, this is your stick. This is my stick. This is McRobs. I is figured the uh, Rob would know how to decorate it. Maybe. Maybe I should. Let's see. What kind of what kind of tables do we have? Not much in the way of actual tables. Hmm. Wait, I got a better idea. Diamond. Let's see what kind of diamond stuff we have. Diamond block of diamond with ornate layer. Ooh. 
nuts to that ring. There's no, like, diamond slabs. There should be something. I wonder if I can cut up a diamond. Oh, there's a diamond slab. Uh, I got a better idea. Uh, where is... Let's see, rod. Let's grab a couple of these stone rods. And let's grab a... Stick. And let's make ourselves really quick a... Saw. Doot doot. There we go. Whoop. And let's grab a crafting table because I'm in creative mode and don't have my own internal crafting table. And we are going to see if we can saw this bitch up. Nice! Wow. Diamond saw. Alright, what do you think about this for the counter? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back. I don't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's good. So we'll do like a diamond railing. Like so. Yes. And then I will do this. That works. Forge micro parts. There's your diamond counter. Awesome. Thank you for the daytime assistance. <laughs> <laughs> now for the actual order thing, I'm kind of thinking that... Do we want... Hmm... I can either just have some out here stocked at all times, you can just come in and get some, or I can make a button that you have to push to receive... Push button, receive loots. I'm leaning towards push button, receive loots. Oh, you would. <laughs> well, you know, push button, receive bacon. Well, yeah. Yieldy baconator. Indeed. Well, let's get a button. There, there's your button for your loots. I didn't receive anything. Well, we haven't done anything with it yet. <laughs> no instant gratification at the crops? You'll receive a smack in the face, how about that? <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking we should probably make this happen with some sort of sound where it goes like you get like some sort of sound to know that you got your loots. Does that sound funny? Okay. Yeah. Maybe like the sound of a portal going off. That works. Shall we portal in loots? <laughs> we could. Let's see, interlinking, should be all we need, but whatever. I'm going to cheaty cheat a book. Uh, really, you don't need to. I could just pipe it out here, but uh, where's the fun in that? I want it to appear out of, as if from nowhere. <laughs> you could do both. You could have it poof somewhere and then go along a conveyor or something. Why would I do that? Because complicated and, you know, crazy build. But then I'd have to conveyor it past you so you can see it happening, and then it would have to poof in. Hmm. It's starting to sound like a build for another day. You're giving me ideas. Nope, I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, let's do this. Um... Hmm. I need more micro parts, I think.
Do you think that's too long of a conveyor to have to wait? Nah. Those don't move very quick, though. Yeah, quick enough. Well, let's do this. At least, at least reduce the time a little bit, I think. And we'll, uh... God, I need to... Just, damn! Ugh! Cannot spell! Oh my god! Okay, let's saw up one of these glowstone glasses. For damn sure. And we are going to do one of these numbers, I think. This way you can see your loot's coming in, but you can't has them right off. Because lol. Yeah, that looks entertaining. Maybe that's too high. Yeah. Is that too high? Drop something in on the other side. Better yet, I'll do that. And... Yeah. Mm. You drop something in back there. I'm gonna see if I can see it just standing here. Well, I can see your face. Eh, you can kind of see it. Uh, I'm gonna lower one, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking that'd be better. Amen. Okay. So, I think what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to use a few things back here. This is gonna be the uh, kitchen area, quote-unquote. Except it's not gonna be your traditional kitchen, because that's not gonna help us out. <laughs> I haven't decided completely on how I want to um, get these things crafted. Maybe we'll go with a cyclic just because it's quick. But um, a large part of this, a large part of the actual build for how to actually get things back here is just going to be showing it. I mean, so we can see it through the conveyor. Because I think that's kind of a funny thing. Obviously, that's not going to happen in a real fast food place. But hey, this is McRobs. So what I'm going to do is a couple of things. First off, we need to slaughter some animals. <laughs> yes? Sounds like a plan. We need to go fetch them. Nah, I already fetched them. Perfect. I has safari nets, reusable. One with the cow, one with the chicken, and one with the pig. And the safari nets are not too hard to make. Just a gas tier and four ender pearls gets you the reusable one. But there is a non-reusable one that dies after one use. And it is used with just string... Uh, safari... There we go, just a slime ball and some string and a leather. But this is a one use, it gets destroyed after you release whatever's inside of it. But if you don't ever release it, you're fine. Yeah. So I'm gonna use those to spawn them. I've got a creative creative cheaty tank for infinite essence, because this isn't about mob essence, this is about microbs. So that's gonna be a thing. We're gonna spawn animals and we are going to turn them into bits. And I think the way that I'm gonna do that is we're gonna set up a Hmm. Cyclic would do it for... A cyclic assembler would do it for the actual crafting of things. Um, we could do it with applied energistics as well, but I don't see applied like a way for... Her. I mean, an interface can't throw stuff onto a conveyor belt, can it? I don't believe so, no. Yeah, that's not going to help us. But then again, the item ducks don't do that either. So, hmm. I'm, I know exactly how I want to do this, but I'm stumping on just a few things really quick here. So give me, um, shit, hmm. How about we do this? How about we go with, okay, we can make the spawners to actually spawn the items. We can give an automated signal when we have so much in stock to stop them and start them. 
and then we can cook them in the furnace. The furnace will spit them out, and then it can go past the assembler. I bet we can put the furnace in this corner here. Let's make an infernal furnace over here. Let's see, neither brick, obsidian, and a um, iron bars. There we go. And this is outlined in the Thomicon. Uh, if you go to the Infernal Furnace, you can see how to make it and everything if you've gotten this research. And this is going to be a magical construct. You put everything together, smack it with your wand. The wand has to have so much essence in it. I guess that's how it works. Do you smack the thing with your wand to actually make the thing start being an Infernal Furnace? Yes. And you have to put the lava block in the center? Yes. So something like this? Yep. And then it's obsidian around the edges, and then it's that on top again, I think. The center's empty. Iron bars in the bottom. And infernal brick all around. There we go. Whoop, shit. And then we get a lava. 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 Love lava. Doink. And then we get a wand. And I'm just going to cheat one in. And we're going to whack this thing. Ha, oh, infernal furnace. And now I have to redo it because we want to put the bellows around it. And I didn't think of that until just now. <laughs> Sour. Much, much better with the bellows. Bellows makes it run faster, right? That's how that works out. I've never actually built one of these before. Yeah. For actual gameplay. They make it run a little bit faster, and then give it an increased chance to produce nuggets when it smelts stuff. Nuggets of all kinds, not just uh, not just meat, right? Correct. So you just throw raw pork in there. I'm just going to throw a bunch in there, and uh, he's going to smelt them slowly and spit them out. I'm not sure if pork counts. Oh, it should. At least for nuggets. There are pork nuggets in the recipe. Hmm. Okay, I'm probably thinking of something else then. Well, so far we're just getting pork. Hmm. I thought I saw a nugget get dropped in there somewhere. Did you? I just picked a five cooked pork chop. Oh, there's a nugget. Nice! Here you go, have a nugget. Oh, I got another one. Sweet. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, this guy will have stuff dropped into him. I think we can convey our stuff in pretty well. So let's see about doing that. We just put that yeah. conveyor right on top of him there. That's cool. And then, um, hmm, he's going to be a while at that, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. So he'll come through here and, and we'll, meat will get dropped into him. Um, does he have, how big of an internal buffer does this guy have? I have thrown, I think, eight stacks of stuff in it and they all came out eventually. Not sure I'm liking where that's going. Maybe we should build more furnaces, one for each type of nugget. Because I don't know if I'm comfortable spawning a ton of monsters. Or spawning a bunch of animals and then having them get slaughtered. And sending their bits on this way. Sounds good. That'll make it faster anyway. Yeah, because what I'm going to do is we're going to set this to automatically cook shit. Uh, automatically spawn and cook shit until there's so much around. At which point it will stop spawning monsters, stop spawning animals. I keep saying monsters, I'm so used to monster spawn. Alright, I'm going to make a few more of these and outline some structure around here and I'll be back, guys. Alright, so this looks pretty awesome, guys. We've got three infernal furnaces with bellows all the way around them and I've got some conveyors going. Shit, yeah! Doesn't this look awesome so far, dude? It looks awesome. So basically what's going to happen is over here in these back corners, I'm going to have the... Uh, the animal spawners, and they're going to get slaughtered, slaughtered, dead, and then all their shit is going to be sent up this way. I'm going to do everything with conveyors, because conveyors look cool, 
Piping has done so much, I'm going to go with conveyors for once. And once everything comes up here, there's however the conveyors get set up this way, they're going to come up the conveyors, they're going to head this way. And these are conveyors from Mine Factory Reloaded and item routers also from Mine Factory Reloaded. And each one of these routers, when we open up the uh, UI, can be told to send certain items certain ways. And if they don't have a way to go, it will send it along the next appropriate route. So what I'm going to do is set up like this router to catch all beef, for example, all raw beef, and it will dump it right into the uh, furnace. And this one, next one, it'll send everything else continue along the path. And this one will catch all chicken and send it into the furnace and send everything down along the path, everything else. And this one will catch all pork and dump it in the furnace and send everything else well into this trash can right here, because that's all we're concerned with. We're concerned with raw animal products only. We're not here to catch drops. Um, I don't know what else they can drop, like cows will drop leather and chicken will drop like feathers and shit, and we don't want that kind of stuff, because this is, this is McRobs, we make waste, bro, we're, we're a fast food place, so everything else is going to get shit canned, right here in the shit can, and then these will cook up everything they receive from the conveyors, it'll dump inside the tops of them, and then they will spit out as they cook up everything, and nuggets will come out, and uh, cooked product will come out, the nuggets are... are a bonus, you said, right? That's how that works. It's like a bonus that gets spits out a nugget occasionally for like its doubling mechanic or whatever. Correct. And I'm not sure how the, how far they'll toss it, so I went up to two out. The second one just pushes it back onto the middle conveyor, and this will just be sent along the path here to another item router. And this this item router will send all nuggets up the conveyor and uh, shit can all the actual product because again, that's how fast food places do it, right? They shit can everything that they don't use. <laughs> Sounds accurate to me. So this will shit can all of the uh, actual cooked meat, and only nuggets will be allowed to come up in here. I'm also going to tell this that bowls can come up here and sugar can come up here, because you're going to want to see all your stuff being made. Um, eventually, we're also going to have splash potions coming up this way, splash potion pieces, which also uses sugar. And we're going to have, um, that's the triple meat treat and the bacon cheeseburger. How do you actually make that thing, by the way? I should, should probably look that up. Bacon, bacon cheeseburger. Uh, a wholesome feast. You combine a cheeseburger with a cooked pork chop or a firm tofu. I guess we'll actually keep the, por the uh, pork chops too then. Hamburger and a cheese. Cheese is a pot and some fresh milk and some salt. Hamburger is a toast and a skillet and some raw beef, so we would need to keep the beef for that too. Hmm. Toast, you smell bread. You know what? Um, how much of this are you wanting to see me do? I mean, do we want to have an actual farm going outside? Do I need to start making up a, like a like a farm outside somewhere with uh, with sugar canes and stuff? Certified organic. Oh Jesus! <laughs> this episode's gonna be long as fuck. Okay guys, so I just showed off the mechanic here, and I will uh, be back in a few moments. Uh, we're going to do the uh, slaughtering mechanics next, I think. Woo! We have migrant workers. <laughs> you going to make a comment about your fezzes? They look very classy. <laughs> I made a joke uh, setting this up about having migrant workers, and Xavier was like, we can't call them migrants unless they have fezzes, so now they have fezzes. But anyway, we're getting wheat and uh, reeds over here for sugar. This is how we're going to be doing our getting our input for receiving things like wheat for the bread for the burgers and the sugar for the making of other things. And this is an ME interface. I'm actually going to manage everything, I think, with Applied Energistics back in the corner there. I'll show that in a second. And this actually has a cable that runs all the way underground. So that goes all the way over here. So they're going to give us wheat and seeds. And uh, the infernal furnaces I moved over a little bit so I could put some storage blocks. These are all set up for uh, meat storage. I got these three are like the, the cooked meat. And then these three are like the raw. And then these three are the nuggets. And then these up here, this is sugar and... Um, sugar cane, uh, reeds and sugar separately, and then this one's wheat and this one is seeds. So these are going to store the various actual products. I've got a chest for overflow. It's going to have the like a, a pot and a bowl and some buckets. And the reason why that is is because the auto crafting setup is set up to auto craft things. Um, 
as well as some of the enemy interfaces over here. So we need milk for like the cheese for the burgers, so I've got this cow being automatically ranched forever. He's bringing milk in, and he is automatically outputting his milk to this fluid transposer, and the fluid transposer has an ME interface set up with a pattern saying one milk bucket out of one bucket. So there's a couple buckets that'll get cycled in there whenever it gets used, whenever an automatic crafting is requested. And then this enemy interface is being just bringing stuff into the system because this is set to automatically output to the left. Make sense? You just staring at me? <laughs> Makes sense. So that's going to bring everything in for the bu milk buckets, and I've got a similar setup set up here. Uh, this is making water buckets and water bottles uh, because there's a couple crafting recipes that use those that I'm going to get set up for in a second. And basically this just has knock waste underneath of it so that it can transpose water into buckets and water into bottles as needed. And then you have to, in order to make the bread, you have to cook toast. So it's like craft one toast out of one bread. So I have a uh, extreme furnace from Better Furnace set up right here with an interface telling it that and exporting out the bottom with a liquid fuel upgrade for it and a cheaty cheat cheap method of getting creative portable tank of uh, ethanol to fuel it because this isn't about this build isn't anything to do with uh, ethanol setup so I'm just cheating in the fuel whatever who cares nothing out of you <laughs> So I've got the conveyor hooked up to everything, and it's going to be running everything past the front window so everybody can see all the things happening. And the reason this conveyor can go up over this cable is because I've got facades on it, so that's why that's happening. And then um, down here, we actually don't need this anymore. That's to those. And then uh, the conveyor actually comes up through the wall and then comes out right here, and this item router receives everything and tells it to dump into the interface, so it just ends up in the interface anyway. So everything that happens just ends up stored regardless, it's just that you can see everything go by the window. So that's kind of where we're at with this. Um, Xavier is playing with various ways to display the food that get cooked. We haven't decided anything yet. I'm still leaning towards pedestals because you can just right click things off there. But uh, that's me. <laughs> I like pedestals. So we're going to have a button push in some fashion that sets those up so that items can get sent to those pedestals when you make your food order. And we're going to set up the uh, animal slaughterhouses over here, which I've already got going for the most part. Um, I'm going to set up, the last thing I'm going to set up that I haven't yet is I'm going to set up a, um, a thingamajig doohinkus level emitter from the ME system saying that whenever there's so many nuggets in the system to go ahead and redstone, redstone signal to turn these off. That's my plan. What do you think? Sounds like a plan. Stuff and blonde and haven and words. Also, the most important part of this build, the biggest change I made while off camera, was uh, I took out an apostrophe and made the uh, C lowercase up here in my sign. <laughs> most important change ever. Obviously. The entire build would be broken without that. Exactly. So I think these can these can these slaughterhouses when they kill things, it just drops their items on the ground, right? Uh, I don't think. I don't think you want the slaughterhouses, because I think that eats the drops and turns it into uh, liquid meat. I think you need the mob grinder. Oh, grinder, right. With my magic purple blocks for power all over the place, because I'm not doing a power spotlight either. There we go. And then what we can do is these will just drop straight onto these conveyors. And whoop. Now we can do one of these numbers. And then we can take these guys like this, and those will go that way. And we can, whoop, there we go. That's how we want to do that. And then we can just send these straight up. Let's give that a wrench, and we'll do this and that. There we go. And actually, let's move these over one. There we go. And then we can go, we can give this a wrench, and this a wrench, and this a wrench, and we can just connect these conveyors. Now everything that gets pulled out of there is going to come up here. And what we can do is we can tell this guy to catch certain pieces of meat, 
and I'll set that off, set that up off camera. But that's how the grinders are going to work out. So uh, give me a few seconds to load these up and set the signal out the way I want them, and I'll be back. All right, guys, pretty much done here. Just kicking off the last few details. Um, I've got these auto spawners set up to uh, emit redstone signal. They're on the uh, connections underneath the floor that hook up to the immigrant workers interface over there. So I'm going to cover these guys up with some uh, facades. These are from Buildcraft. And it occurs to me I haven't shown how to make any of this stuff at all, but there's been so many different things I've been using to do this build that I haven't been stopping to show how to make them. Uh, most of this is applied energistics. Uh, you guys saw how I made the furnaces though, because it's a uh, Thomcraft thing. You stack up things and mac smack them with the wand. Uh, for uh, applied energistics list and this is pretty much all applied energistics and mine factor reloaded which is all pretty easy stuff just look it up in any eye um, I may go through at the end before I edit the when I edit out the video and show what I used and how to make it but maybe I don't know we'll see if I decide to go to that much effort but after you cover up these level limiters with a um, facade you can still right click through them and you can show, tell this to emit certain levels at certain times so I'm gonna go to like 64 and I'm gonna take my chicken nugget and click it right in there and it takes a ghost imprint of it and it says that if there's 64 chicken nuggets in the ME system it checks the ME system and if there's 64 nuggets it emits a signal when levels are above or equal to limit so right now it's not emitting a signal so I can just get down here and show that <laughs> There we go. No signal on. And now I have to fix my floor. <laughs> there we go. So we'll do the same thing with the beef and the chicken. But I can start spawning them right away. So I'm going to go ahead and take the safari net that I used to capture chicken earlier and stick it in there. And he will start spawning chickens. Hopefully. Or not. Hmm. We'll go beef nugget right there. And we'll stick the cow in the center. And we will go with uh, pork nugget right there. 64. Stick the pork in the center. I didn't do 64 right here. Uh, no. And no. You appear to be missing essence. Oh, shit. How did I forget the essence? I've got a tank I've been carrying around with the essence the whole time, too. Oh, sour about that. Okay. So you need mob essence to spawn mobs. Go figure. So I just right-clicked with the tank and it spawned a cow. Let's just make sure these all work. Oh, how did I get... Uh, I got a cow on the pig side. Interesting. They're escaping. They are escaping. That's not good. Hmm. Well, we can obviously see, obviously see that the drops worked out. <laughs> I haven't configured these to do anything yet. Sour. Okay, hang on. Let's pick up these drops, or not, because they're on the conveyor. Okay. Um, do you think I should... I thought those would only spawn in a 3x3 three three area, but they were spawning out as far as, like, 5, weren't they? Yeah. It might be a 3 block radius. Oh, shit. Well, let's do this then. Hang on, I'm gonna rebuild this, guys. Alright, guys, we are back, and I made these pens a little wide. We are encroaching a little bit on the uh, migrant workers' territory, but I don't think they'll be affected too much. Flipped the cables to the other side. As you can see, I've got the uh, level emitters down there now. Because uh, these can spawn into a 5x5 radius, not a 3x3. And uh, that was my mistake. But we can just cover up these with covers here. If I can get down here properly. Uh, sit. Uh, damn. There we go. So we can do this. And we can get these uh, pipes set up. And once we get these pipes all covered up, what I can do is get up here and wrench the uh, tank. If I can stop placing them in the wrong fucking place. There we go. Uh, uh, did, sit, uh. So 
sometimes talking and pushing to talk at the same time is makes messes with the game a little bit. <laughs> so we can wrench this, and uh, or not that. Whoops. The tank will automatically output, and there we have animals. Bow. And they will start getting their asses murdered, murdered horribly. I like that. So much food. Look at all the meat products, man. Oh shit. I, uh, ah, screwed that up. Need to have a conveyor there to actually put those into the uh, tra iron transposers. Or the router, I mean. But I just realized something else to terrible. Hang on a second, though. Um, shoot! Pork. And chicken. Needs to come out of the yellow spot there. So let's put pork there and chicken there. Nope, that's not chicken. That's a splash potion. Or regular potion, anyway. I wasn't quite ready for this, I guess. Trash. Trash can, there we go. Is white an actual output side or no? I don't think it is. I'm not sure. Can't say I've used these. Doesn't look like it is. I mean, int. There we go. We'll get that right there, and we'll get cable right here. Because we want an equal amount of beef to come out of both sides. And I'm gonna have to. Shit. There's a lot of crap piling up there while I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, we're at about 500 entities. Shit. Ah, oh god. I'll break in the wall for now. EY conveyor belt. There we go. The reason I was the reason I got caught up on that was because I wanted to get this set up so that an equal amount of beef got cooked as got sent on because I need beef to come out just as much as anything else. I need raw beef in here because beef is part of the hamburger recipe. So we don't want to cook all of it. Raw beef is part of the hamburger recipe. So yeah, that's a thing. And all this is going to come up here and, and seen through the window outside and uh, come into the system eventually anyway. So if we look in here, hopefully, uh, yep, we got 113 raw beef and we got some pork and some other things coming through here. There's some chicken, there's some more pork. Hopefully we'll get nuggets sometime soon. Nope, oh, there's a nugget. Sweet. So we are now actually cooking up and using what we're producing. The feathers and the uh, leather and the eggs that are coming in are getting put in the trash can that I actually put in the wall there, which is going to look hideous from outside. But what I'm going to do, actually, is I don't really see a way around that, because that one router has to trash everything else. Oh, those are landing on the ground still. Damn it! Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, so much rage. Why are those popping out on the ground, man? Maybe they need to be filtered to go into the... Whatchamacallit. Shoot! The interface. Right. Green, I guess. Okay, let's so... Green, and green, and green. And we need some of the nuggets, too. Chicken nugget, green. There's the beef nugget. Green and green. Wait, that was chicken as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that was chicken also. Shit, I need a pork nugget. There we go. Just throw those in there manually. Uh, pork nugget, nice. We'll get over here. There we go, pork nugget. Now they're filtered. I just thought that if I didn't filter, like everything else would hit the trash can was what I was hoping, but all the other stuff gets trashed back here, so it's not a big deal. And then we can go outside and we can put a cover on that trash can so it looks at least semi-decent from outside. There we go. Doink. And if you stand back and don't look too close, there's not an edge. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know what else to do with that, man. <laughs> so the riders can't eject into pipes? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried. But this looks like a really cool production line anyway. If it could, we could go through the walls, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. At least it looks good. That is a lot of animal products coming out. Yeah. Look at that. So the level emitters will eventually turn on the signal, which will stop the spawners when there is 64 of each type of nugget. So there's the chicken nugget will stop the chicken spawning, and the pork nugget, 64 of them, will stop the porks from spawning, and so, so on and so forth like that. And the golems will just work their asses off forever because they're migrant workers and they will never stop. So the last thing we need to do is to set up in here to put this so we can make glass bottles. And I have a crafting recipe for that. So now we can put glass, glass bottles up here. And I've got brewing stands that are automatically set up to receive bottles of water. So, um... Yes? Three glass bottle with three glass. Um, oh, I didn't tell this to move and craft, did I? No, because he knows how to craft that. So, mm. this is move and craft. Yeah. This is not working the way it's supposed to. <laughs> this can make glass, and this knows that it can make a glass water bottle, or a water bottle out of one glass bottle. And I gave it a pattern to make glass bottles. And I set up a, a chest over here. I put a I put a creative mode chest over here, one for glass, because I'm assuming that you're gonna have a. I'm assuming that there's gonna, that whoever's doing this, if anybody actually does this in a real world, mm -hmm. they're gonna have some sort of mining set up so that they have sand com incoming to make glass with. I've also got the same thing for nether wart because I'm not gonna make another wart farm, and I've got the same thing for uh, bowls because I'm assuming that you'll make a tree farm. I could have made a tree farm in here, but that would have looked weird, so I didn't do it. But this is supposed to... I know this exports properly to the brewing stand, because this brewing stand already has another wart in it. So the export works. Um, or wait, maybe, do I already have 64 in there? No, I have one speed potion. There's only one potion in there, so these these level emitters are supposed to turn off these guys because I have these set to active without signal, and I have the level emitters set to if there's 64 potions then to turn on a signal. So these should be getting glass bottles. I'm not sure why they're not. Uh, my aqueous down here is set to receive from the top. Mm. Yep, he's set to receive from the top. The enemy interface says to craft one glass bottle with one glass, or one water bottle with one glass bottle. You seeing something I'm missing, Xavier? <laughs> Do the glass bottles actually, or the water bottles, actually get inserted into the bottom side, maybe? Or a different side? Because maybe it's trying to insert the water bottles into the top slot. Oh, sour. You think so? That would be so bad. Hmm. Okay, let's try that really quick here. Let's get a export. And let's get a water bottle. And let's do... Shit. Alright, uh, export mm -hmm. and export. And we're going to tell this to never mind. Oh, shit. Damn it. Another warrant, that's fine. Mm. We'll have a move single items anyways. We'll leave that alone. And we'll do this down here. We're going to go single items and craft, and single items and craft. And we'll mm. put a water bottle there. Yeah, that totally worked, by the way. <laughs> Success. And we need an awkward. How do you spell awkward? Damn it, how do you spell awkward? 
A W K W A R D. Water bottle. This is an awkward potion. Yeah, there's an awkward potion there. Why do I have that in there? That shouldn't be in there. I'll just get one out of the chest. <laughs> So he's moved single items of craft. Okay, sweet. So, oh shit. Oh, that was awkward with that flickering awkward potion. Yeah, um, I'm thinking it's trying to pull that out at the same time as it's sending it in. Yeah, it is. God damn it. Uh. Hmm. Fuck. Maybe you can tell the import bus to only import the finished product. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Uh. Damn it. Mm. Right, I'm gonna grab this awkward potion out of here. And we're gonna tell this to only... Only import awkward potions. And tell this guy to only import swiftness potions. Yeah, that fixed the flickering. Nice. Oh, good. That's very handy, because, you know what? <laughs> that was terror bad right there. That was a lot of terror bad. I think I might do something like this with this furnace, this conveyor belt line with this furnace. This looks so kick-ass. I might do something like this with my with my regular play series. What do you think? Yeah, I'm really enjoying the way that you see a whole bunch of crap coming in this way. And then it just gets cleaner and cleaner as it's heading this way. Yeah. Of course, if this was a real actual play series, we wouldn't be trashing all the feathers and the uh, leather. But, uh, they'd be going into some sort of storage system. But this still looks really awesome. I'm not sure how much of the, um... What do the item grades do, exactly? They make it so entities don't fall in, like player entities. Oh, that's it. Because I'm wondering how much is in their internal yeah. buffers right now, because I think that's, they're getting stuff faster than they're smelting by a good bit. Oh yeah, they're probably chock full. I have no idea how much can go in there, but, uh, well, this will definitely push it to the limit. Yeah, this will produce. Let's, let's throw some Ignis in front of it really quick here. Uh, Warded Jar, and we'll go with Ignis... Oh, do you just have jars for it already? Yeah. Ignis. There we go. That'll help at least. Yoink! Now you have a jar. Yoink. Oh, you labeled them too? <laughs> That's funny. This just looks so kick-ass. I can't even believe how kick-ass this looks. This is one of the more entertaining things I think I've ever done. So anyways, uh, let's finish the build, shall we? <laughs> yeah. So we got... Then we can bask in its glory. We got all the sugar and all the seeds coming in, all the animal products coming in. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to go with everything. The system already knows down here how to make the cheeseburger and the cheese and everything. Because one cheeseburger takes a lot of shit. Uh, it's a cheeseburger and a cooked pork chop, which we're getting plenty of from the system. The cheeseburger is one hamburger and one cheese. The cheese is going to be a pot and some milk and some salt. Uh, the milk is coming from the milked cow. Uh, the cheese... The, the cooked pot and everything I already have in the system here. There's a skillet and a pot in here. 
for these specific reasons. And the thing about this is that um, these are from Pam's Harvest uh, mod, and these will never break. These, the skeleton pot have infinite durability, so you don't have to worry about making those and replacing them. You just need to make one and stick it in the system somewhere so the system knows it has it. And then uh, the that's the cheese, and the hamburger itself is a skillet and a toast and a raw beef. The toast is you smelt bread. And that's what this guy right here is doing. So we got all that kind of stuff, and because we have the nuggets and the bowls, and the sugar from the sugar farm for the uh, that in the first place we can make the triple meat treats and we have the potions in the system so these should automatically stop when there's 64 potions these should automatically stop when there's 64 of each nugget and the migrant workers as we discussed never stop so I think we're pretty much done with the actual mechanics let's get out here really quick oh you said that these go through the covers didn't you <laughs> yep flesh counter Oh, it looks so good. Okay, hang on. Um, so we want to push button and receive loot, right? Yes. So I've got export buses underneath of them already, and I'm going to tell this to export a cheeseburger, uh, activate once per pulse, and move single items and craft. So he will craft a cheeseburger and stick it up there. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the triple meat street. Once per pulse, move and craft. And the same with the... Well, actually, we don't need the awkward potion because we're already keeping full ones in there. We're not going to craft those as they go. They're, it's already keeping a lot of those stocked. So we can just say active once per pulse with that and just move single items. So that's that. And uh, all we need now is to get a button and some cabling and there we go button and we're gonna go there and I'm gonna shift this to orange and we're gonna go cable right there and I'm going to set him to cable only mode and we're gonna go button right there and this will be cable only mode because uh, otherwise it's gonna connect to the block of diamond cover and then button is gonna go right there and that'll be orange and then we'll do the same thing over here. Orange. Cable only. Uh, cable only. And button on orange. And then orange. That way it doesn't send signaling out to the other blocks. Not that it would really matter in this build, but hey, just in case. Uh, it must be too far away. There we go. And there we go. And there we go. And there's a button. And orange. I'm going to put this in here. And now we're going to get a sign. And I'm going to get a block. Diamond block should be fine. And I'm going to make these labeled. Check this out. I'm going to go number number one, bacon, cheese, cheeseburger. And we're going to go number two, triple meat treat. And we're going to go number three, swiftness potion. Now granted, I could make those signs a lot prettier with computer craft, but I don't code, so there you go. That's as good as you're going to get with your signs and your numbers. So go ahead and order, whenever you're ready, sir. <laughs> Ordering. Now that should be crafting up everything in a second here. Oh, there you go. Bam! Now keep in mind you have to right-click the pedestal underneath, not the countertop. <laughs> There's your hamburger. Eat it. Eat it! I need to be hungry, apparently. Oh, well then just hold it and be happy. There you go. That's happy enough. You want to order the rest of your things? <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, it popped off the pedestal. That was weird. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird that it did that. Mm. Push it again. Huh. Is it 
I didn't cross the wiring, did I? Did I cross a wire? I don't think so. Doesn't look like I crossed a wire. Hmm. Well, order the potion. That one will be even quicker because it just moves. Bam. Mm. Maybe the counters are popping them off. Well, no, because they stayed there. Oh, yeah. Or. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, the hamburger stays there. Well, you know what? I think that's good. I'd call this a successful build. What do you think? Yeah. Build success. Get a nice view of the meat coming through. That's, that's a lot of meat coming through there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put one of those up there so we can look at them. I'm going to flip my camera around so we can pose for the camera. Just like this. There we go. Yes? <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, build success. I hope you enjoyed McRobs. You got any final words there, Xavier? Om nom nom nom. Very excellent final words. Hope everybody enjoyed. Hope everyone had an OP time. Make sure to like, favorite, follow, subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter, slash Rob the OP Gamer. Peace! Say peace. Peace. Oh, you don't do it with the gusto I do.